Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is part, I don't even know at this point, of building a data center at my house. Um, in this video, we are going to be setting up monitoring for my UPS units that I have. Um, I have a Raspberry Pi right here that's PoE powered, kind of. Um, and we're going to be using that to monitor the power status of the UPS units that I have. So um, let's go check it out. I'll show you, we'll explain a little bit more. So before filming this video today, um, I did actually set up um, this UPS to be monitored by Nut, which is running on this Pi. So essentially this rack is monitored now from um, Home Assistant actually, and that's what's taking care of the monitoring. Um, in hindsight, or I guess what I'm going to probably do is not use Home Assistant for monitoring. Um, I mean, it is running on the Pi, but I do want to find another solution for getting the logs and stuff um, automatically reported. Home Assistant basically reaches out to this device. So if there's something wrong with Home Assistant, that would be an issue. But if this can reach out to an endpoint um, in the event of a power failure, then that would be amazing. So um, this is just monitored through USB from that UPS. It's all kind of self-contained. Um, there's pretty much one power cord to the rack and everything else is just powered through the power strip that goes from there to the power strip up here, um, powering the NVR and the switch right there. However, for my new data center rack, um, things are getting a little bit more complicated. Uh, and let me show you why. So at the bottom of the rack, you'll see we actually do have three UPSs down here. So we have a cyber power, we have another cyber power and an APC unit right there. Um, each of them are anywhere from 1500 volt amps to 1000 volt amps. Um, the one on the left here, the cyber power is what's running most of the networking equipment. So it's running like the ONT, it's running these um, ubiquity switches um, as well as the PDU. And then these two UPS units over here are pretty much just for redundancy. So um, basically on this unit, the primary power supply for one of these servers is on this one. Um, and then the backup power supply for one of these top servers would be on that one and then vice versa. So like this one over here has a primary power supply from here and a primary power supply from here. And then, like I said, it also has the backup from the other servers and this has the backup from the bottom servers. I realize that might've made zero sense at all and that's okay. You don't have to understand that part. Um, but what you do get to understand by watching this video is how to set up network UPS tools. So I'm going to basically put a Pi about right here in the rack. That's going to be PoE powered from the switch. Um, and it's going to be connected to the UPS uh, devices down below. So it's kind of hard to see, um, but these do mostly all have U uh, USB. So there's a USB connector there, USB connector here, and actually a serial connector there. But all of the UPSs do come with cables to connect them to USB. So it's literally just a matter at this point for physical connections, it's a matter of plugging the Pi in and then plugging the three UPS units in to the Pi through USB. Everything else is digital, um, it's through the Pi. So We'll get to that in a second once I get the Pi installed. All right, so at this point, I've got the Pi mounted, the cables managed enough. Um, and then I have like a bunch of the, or all of the USB cables are kind of just draping down right now. You can see them all right here. Like I said, it's just two type B cables and one of them is serial. So now I'm gonna go around the front and then try to plug them in through the back. I think that's gonna be easier. Um, but the Pi is booted up. And then after I do that, we're gonna go back to the office and we will add these pies into nut basically. So the easiest part right now is the install. So I just ran sudo apt install nut. We'll click enter uh, to download it. And that's pretty much all we have to do in terms of actually downloading things. Okay, so now we're gonna run this command sudo nut scanner u and it basically just gave us the three UPS units that we have connected. So um, that's pretty awesome. It, it really makes it a lot easier. So. Now we can run sudo nano etc nut ups.conf. You'll see we have no UPSs in our comp file. So we're literally just gonna copy this and go into our comp file at the bottom and paste these things in. So we could label these. So in fact, I actually may label these. Um, so we can say it's a cyber power, cyber power one. This one we can call cyber power two and then we'll call this APC one. So that's our three units that we have. And then now on the keyboard, we can do control X, Y and then enter. And that is all we have to do for that file. Okay, so now, um, in this case, I do want to be able to watch this from Home Assistant. So, uh, this file is blank, but if you edit etc nutupsd.com, you can go down to the bottom and we can just type this in. So, we can say listen 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 on port 3493. Um, and basically, it's just going to allow us to actually uh, remotely log in. Um, and with that being said, we do have to edit this file too, which is the etc nutupsd.users file. So we'll go into here, um, and at the bottom, you'll see we don't have any users currently. So 
Um, now we're just going to basically just put a user in here. So maybe we can just call this remote mon and uh, password is super secure UPS. So um, save this. Uh, and then now we do want to edit the mode. There's a few different modes we have. We have the none, which is basically nothing to do um, with the actual controlling of things. We have net server, which is basically um, just how you can kind of share it over the network. We have net client, which only responds to the UPS mon. So net client is what you want on a remote computer to kind of receive the shutdown command from. Um, and we also do have standalone, which just uh, shuts down the actual system. Our mode is currently none. So we do want to change this. So we're gonna say net server and we'll control X, Y, enter. And then now we can make these changes to the net server file. So that should be all that we need to do. Um, and now we can actually go into Home Assistant and try this out. Okay, so now we're inside of Home Assistant. Um, and it's a matter of just adding device. So we'll type in the IP and port that we want. Um, and we'll basically just grab the username and password that we used previously. And actually I got these. And actually I do have these mixed up. So we'll need to do this. And we will add our UPS, APC1. That's good. Now we'll close out of this, add another one. And then finally we'll add the last one in here. Submit. Add in this bottom one. Submit skip and finish this one is also online so i'm unsure why the apc ups here says it's a disabled by config entry i don't even know what config it's referencing because this won't even let me enable it so if, apparently if you just disable and re-enable it it just fixes it so um that's online so we now have three ups units online we have the apc one cyber power one and cyber power two and of course because this is home assistant you can make really nice and good looking dashboards like this so You'll see all four of my UPSs are online. If you click on them, we get more info there. Um, really straightforward, really easy to do. Um, now at this point, uh, in the future, I will probably set this up so it does automatically shut my servers down if we do get to that low um, runtime. But I think as we are now, it is a lot better because I do have monitoring over them. So it'll um, at least give me some kind of uh, warning in advance that the UPS units are actually on battery power. So pretty cool. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Hope it was beneficial and helpful to you. I will see you guys all in the next video.